I'm here with Candy Cooper, and Candy has brought the most amazing upcycled denim jacket. I love it, Candy. Thank you, Julie. You always have so much style, and this does not disappoint. And these are addicting to make. I think you're going to love like this project. Cool. So how do we get started? We've got a lot to do. The first thing you're going to do is start literally just like slashing uh, you're up cutting, your jacket. You're cutting <laughs> a perfectly good jacket. Are you aware that I'm, you're doing that? I'm cutting a perfectly good jacket. And I'm going to do it wherever you can think that you want some rips and ravels. So I'm cutting oh out the seam. You want to do your collar. A lot I of people do use notice seam that rippers. you're making small cuts. You're not making drastically huge ones. Small cuts. But basically, you just want to kind of just get in there and dig at that denim a little bit. Okay. So that you get a lot of texture on your jacket. Let me just slide this one over. See how that looks? after you throw it into the oh. washing machine, which would be your next step. Oh, so you didn't do this by hand. <laughs> okay. Julie, I got stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing you would do after you wash it is then you're gonna attack it with some paint. I'm using some like fabric ink. You can dip your brush in a little bit of water if you wanna thin it out, but paint is paint. You know this with oh, all yeah. your, your painted aprons. And I'm using just an inexpensive um, bristle brush just to splash a little bit of color. I like to start kind of neutral this isn't that neutral, well, but, but you know what I'm saying? Blue on blue is blue kind blue. of neutral. Yeah, and then you're just going to brush over it in select areas to where, um, and just get it to the point where you're happy. So anyway, once you get all of your paint and all your mm -hmm. colors, we'll deal with that one later. That's the other beautiful um, part about this project is you can stop and start, you know? Let's stencil it a little bit. So you're taking, this is just stencil film. Stencil film. I've got a couple dies here. These are steel okay. rule dies. And I'm gonna use this um, die cutting machine. These are magnetic. I was so gonna say, it sounds like they're clicking to place or you're tap dancing. Right, so you just, like what I like to do is just kind of nestle them together a little bit. So is that, that so that you don't waste your plastic or so that you have a particular design I'm on just, your stencil? Yes, I'm just starting with a particular design. Hang on, I'm so excited I forgot to put the cutting pad in place. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna work. <laughs> Learn from me, Julie. <laughs> I think, you you know, the thing I always say to people is I've made every mistake you can think of. <laughs> yeah. We all have, and that's part of the crafting and the making process, process is really making mistakes. And, I mean, you know this too, there's some cool stuff that can come out of those mistakes, you know? Oh, yeah. I think all learning comes out of mistakes, that failure is the number one thing that leads to success. Totally. So the next thing you would do, and you, I know you know your stuff when it comes to stenciling, is kind of nestle the film mm -hmm. into where you want your next cuts. So that you're creating a pattern as you go. As you go. Instead of just random, I can see from your finished stencil that this is a distinct pattern you've chosen to do. That's right, and it'll all make sense in the end, but this is, um, so now it's time to stencil, basically. So you wanna get all your painting done. I kinda like to get it done first, but, um, you can do it after. But I think that's the fun thing about the creative process is that you do it one way, I do it another way, right. you know, and it doesn't matter. Now let's talk about your stenciling technique because <laughs> this is totally different from how I stencil and I love that. What technique? So, <laughs> but you know, you haven't taped your stencil down, oh, you're no. holding it in place, you're no. using a stencil brush, which the big difference, will you tell people between a stencil brush and a regular brush? Um, the the bristles are stiffer and they're more tightly compact. I'm t this is I don't know they're round. Yeah, and it usually <laughs> has a flat top as opposed to coming totally. to anything top, and it's just it's meant for this sort of pouncing motion. That's right, and you know what I um, also the thing that I've had a lot of stencil fails. You want to use thick paint, right? Yes. Oh when my gosh, stenciling. I'm That's so glad secret. you said that. You got to use the thick paint. So now. When we reveal, we've got this little faint little area. You know what I love is that it's sort of Ombre. more intense here and lighter. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. So then once you're done, and you can again go in and brush some more color if you want or whatever, but now let's get into some hardcore leather embellishing. Okay. And so we can die cut with the same dies some leather pieces to go on top of our jacket. Now I love that you're using the same dies because it creates so much rhythm in what Echoing. you're doing. Yes. yes, and that's one of the secrets you, that uh, secret ways that you can tie a design together is with shape, right? So now we're just gonna put our material on those same dies, cutting pad in place, mm -hmm. and I've got a pile in front of you. The other secret sauce to this jacket is the Look fringe. Look at this leather. Oh, it's shiny. It's shiny, metallic. I didn't realize that. That's you really cool. You can't sparkle, Julie. <laughs> 
<laughs> I happen to agree with you. I like a little bit of sparkle. Okay. But yeah, I just didn't I didn't think about leather as being that sparkle. Yeah. And then with the denim. Um, oh, you're gonna go denim on denim? Denim on denim. <laughs> it's like Justin Timberlake, well, no, Britney but I think Spears, it's cool. and me. <laughs> Because you have like a light color denim jacket, you could use a different color denim to go on it. Yeah. If you're, you know, if you're altering your denim jacket in some way, really fun. So cute, right? Yeah. So now you would just lay out your um, jacket and kind of think about like, where can I tuck this denim in? On the one we're getting ready to stitch on, what I thought was kind of cool was putting this little chunks of fringe below the buttonholes. Oh, just to that add a little is texture. Super cute. Thank you. And then, and there's no rule stitching here. Like we're gonna, you know, you'll see in a minute. And then you want to kind of lay these leaves that you've cut out. Go with your look all over wherever you want. You can put some down here, like whatever you want, right? Echoing the stenciling, playing yeah. around with it. Yeah, and put so it on cool. a mannequin form so you can see how it's gonna look when it's on. Because when it's flat, it looks different. You ready to stitch some let's leaves? Let's sew. Let's sew. Okay, let's do it. And um, we've got our needle threaded. Everything's lined up. You're using, I assume, like a leather or a denim needle, something really heavy duty. Bingo. I'm using a, a leather needle or a denim needle works okay. fine too. And I'm using, the other secret is a long stitch because this leather is gonna eat up your stitch length because it's so puffy. Does that make yeah. sense? I've sewn leather somewhat unsuccessfully before, <laughs> and I'm thinking part of it is stitch length. I knew, somebody told me on the internet that to use a leather needle, but I did not lengthen my stitch. Yeah, and then I anchor my stitch just like with a reverse stitch when you start, and then a reverse stitch so when you end. So for people who don't know a lot about machine stitching, what what is that doing? It's creating a knot of some kind or it's, stopping it? It's just anchoring your thread so that it doesn't pull out. I'm looking for my little stitch there cutter. You go, your there we go, cutter. my thread cutter here. And you can see that my stitch is even a little bit crooked, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because this is an artsy jacket. You could go over this thing 12 times and it would look really cool, right. change your thread colors. Well, also, because this is a wearable, you do want it to be very secure, right. which is, of course, why you're anchor stitching. Right, this is a wearable. And that's the other thing, like I was gonna say, if you don't like how stiff your jacket is, um, wash it before you do this leather embellishing. Hey, what happens to the fringe when you wash it? Does it become like even more sort of disintegrated or? <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. Okay. And I'm gonna say like if you don't want it to, to put sort of a stabilizer on your denim. You know, like a fabric stabilizer. Right. Okay, so if we look back at the finished jacket here. Yes, let's, let's come on it. over and check it out. I think it's absolutely amazing. The stitching, you know, crooked and all looks amazing. The fringe looks great, the distressing. Thank you. Such Stenciling. a cool project, Candy. I love it. You can do anything you want. I'm gonna go hunting at the thrift store. <laughs> I'll be I'll be joining you. There you go. <laughs> awesome.